This time in the BK, I connect with long-term model and yoga teacher, Kate Bell, about the purpose of finding your tribe and how to naturally treat menopause in the podcast dedicated to people, product, and profession. The Brand Connect is proudly presented to you by Teaspoon Co. You may too say yes, please, to their handcrafted organic loose leaf tea. To kick back, here comes the BK. Good everyone. I'm Matt Jai and welcome to the Brand Connect. This is a ding dong of this one. I'm with Kate Bell. How are you, Kate? Hi, Matt. I'm great. Awesome, Kate. Yeah. Now, you know, obviously, Kate, um, we're sitting in 2021. Um, you love to play. Tell me about, about your playtime. My playtime. Um, oh, I like to play outside. So, yeah, I love the beach and love the bush and, yeah, all sorts of things that keep you fresh and happy. So that yep. playtime, though, for you, from mm. what I gather, I mean, you've been in front of a camera for um. some sort of years <laughs> and you've also been teaching yoga for a similar amount of time. Yeah, yoga's 10 years less than modelling. So when did you start yeah. modelling? How old were you? 17 and I'm 52 now. Wow, that's a journey, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> extended period. <laughs> How yeah. much has changed in that extended period then? Um, in myself or in the industry? Oh, yeah. I, I suppose the industry uh, initially is the, the, the prompt response that I think just sort of, from what I've seen, I'm just an, mm -hmm. you know, a person who looks at stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been 25 years with a camera, but generally nowhere near what you've been doing, like as in um, fashion and working, I suppose, with glamour and, and product, mm -hmm. you know, or people and, and celebrating uh, magazine editorials and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But how much has changed in modelling? Since the advent of social media, it's just blown it all wide open and now pretty much anyone can be a model, which is great, um, um, you know, across the advertising world. Um, the high fashion still the same. You have very tall, young women um, and that's just sort of the really upper, upper echelon that hasn't changed much. But, but other than that, like um, all of a sudden it's inclusivity and it's diversity and that's happened overnight. And I think the biggest thing that has changed in the industry is that there is so much, so many more women working in, in high places. So you have female photographers and you have female art directors and you have female heads of, you know, companies. And so their aesthetic, um, it's lagging a little in Australia. Um, I think we're lagging. I think we're a really ageist um, little country down here which is a shame <laughs> but it will change because women that are 50 plus have two and a half times more to spend than anybody else on the planet so brands are going to have to start really advertising to their actual market so that's going to be really interesting so I think that's going to um, it hasn't happened quite yet like it is slowly slowly happening and um, when you say ages do you mean yeah. like a cultural yeah. Sort of difference like we've got with every ist, sort of, so to speak. Since the beginning of advertising, things have been um, run by men and, I th and, you know, run men ran things and that, you know, came out of the 50s and all that sort of stuff. And I think, um, you know, we've all seen things like Mad Men and, you know, the series and you can see how women had a very different sort of place in society and, and role in society. and. That's so changed. And what about Bombshell then? I mean, didn't that lift a lid on the way yeah. that women were perceived? And in that the was news? so recent. That was so recent. And so I think things like that's what the question was. I think things like ageism is just a real lag in the way that women are represented in advertising. So at the moment, they're still using super young women and they're advertising to women like me. And it, doesn't come across um, because it's sort of, I'm starting to find it sort of slightly disrespectful and I'm being, and um, you know, the fact that mature women aren't being acknowledged. Um, Do you find it senseless as well? Like in the way that they're perceiving the way you'd understand what they're trying to sell you? It is senseless. It is, but it's, um, it's this very, um, it's this very subtle put down and that's sort of what I wanted to 
why I even did this sort of podcast. I'm really interested in what you do and I think you do a great job. But what I wanted to, to really talk about um, as a mature model, um, having been in the industry for so long, is the fact that um, it's sort of the tail end of feminism, what's happening okay. right now. And we haven't got to the end of it, but the fact that, and I have to put it sort of, put it kindly because it is nobody's fault. It's just a way that we're sort of waking up in consciousness and realizing what our actions are. It's an era that's got to be broken, right? A yeah. shell of an era. Yeah, it is. It is. Young women, they're so easy to photograph. I get it. All images are going to look so, so beautiful on young, young people. However, that's not the market. And to continue doing that and serving up this sort of, these images that they live on don't, afterpay anyway, right? The young kids, if you're selling it to them. They're not the ones that are buying. They I'm buying. Cash. We're buying. No, they don't have it. It's like <laughs> so the fact that they keep doing that is is saying this is this is sort of is saying that your mature women and mature men to its to some degree as well, although yeah, to some degree as well, aren't really nice enough or pretty enough or well, do you think they know attractive that... enough or interesting enough and we certainly can't shoot a mature woman looking sexy and we certainly can't shoot a mature woman looking stylish and it's like all these sort of preconceived ideas about age it's just like where do you get off art directors that don't speak to mature women maybe they think that we are going to buy regardless because we're going to look at it and go you know what i want that you know what i'm going to buy that whereas the young kids, they're trying to, to drill down into their brain. Um, he or she looks great in that, so so would you. But you you and I know. But I understand what you're saying in the in the glamour and, and the, um, I mean, my wife's 43 this year. She looks mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Like Yeah. She's yeah. So going to look great for, two, for yeah. decades. So preconceived ideas about what 40 is and what 50 is and what 60 is, it's not the same as it was 10 years ago and it's certainly not the same as it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Come 50, you're not an old person. You don't have a lifestyle of an old person. You don't dress like an old person. Like you're not aged as such. You're just 50. <laughs> Do you, <laughs> you know? sort of think that that Gen X, the... the I guess we are, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, How old are you, Matt? I'm 48. You're a yoga teacher, right? Mm -hmm. So when I think about some of my friends who are 48, they've got bad knees, bad hips, bad this, bad that, and, and, and they're almost thinking that they're, they're not surfing anymore, they're not, works mm -hmm. really hard, I may as well get a desk job, I can't do this. I think they're almost really? putting themselves that's, out of the pasture, yeah. That, that's their headspace. Yeah. Well, they've probably been overlooked for so long that they're not, but like, you know, maybe if advertising was saying, you know, was showing a, a 50 year old man jumping into the surf and, you know, going surfing every morning with his boys and stuff like that, maybe they might have different perceptions of themselves. Like Lifestyle as and, well though, lifestyle choices. Yeah, that yeah get you definitely, to that point. all across the board, all across the board. Advertising is, is like a, it, it is like a sort of a um, very sneaky sort of like, Brain manipulation. Well, Facebook know that, don't they? They try and <laughs> drill it into you, right? And every other social media outlet. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think where advertising goes, people will follow. That's, I guess, what, um, yeah, what the, what the thing is. So you show men and women um, more encouraging in images, more motivating images about what their life could be. And I think people will, like, that will just be sort of subliminal and maybe their lives might reflect that or start to reflect that. So as a model mm. then. Um, maybe you, that's being you, like. I no, you, you're right. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe I live in a little, I don't know. No, I don't think you live in a bubble. I think <laughs> the, 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 the reality is though too is like um, you're in your 50s, right? Mm. So, you know, hopefully it sounds um, eloquent enough to say it, but you look great. Thanks. You know, and you obviously a bit hot here, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Those it's lights. a hot flash. <laughs> yeah. no. um, but you do. You look great, and I think you look great because you've done the work daily, right? But I think doing the work daily is no different to brushing your teeth. I mean, I can't say brushing my hair, 
<laughs> yeah, then I got to shave my head too. That's it why. is a headspace thing. Yeah, it is absolutely a headspace. Like I've just never considered age to be any barrier to anything. And um, I went through a period where my knees were screwy and my hips were screwy and stuff. But what do you do? More yoga? Um, or eat different? I think you have to take yourself. You have to treat yourself really kindly. And those issues are coming up in your body because for a very long time, maybe you didn't walk properly. Maybe you wore the wrong shoes. Maybe you sat at a desk too much. Or Bit of self-care, nurturing. Definitely. Understanding. Yep. Yep. Maybe you haven't checked in with yourself enough. How important yep. is that then as a yoga practitioner and a yoga teacher to, because uh, I've worked with, in ballet in Austria, would you believe? Okay. Yeah, yeah, which is As great. a ballet dancer? Or, no. <laughs> no um, in ca- in okay, camera work, okay. not a ballet dancer. But, <laughs> well, you never know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the Royal Academy of Dance, the RAD mm-hmm. format, mm-hmm. Um, if you had got a really good uh, ballet teacher, as you yep. know from yoga and yep. I know from Qigong, yep. um, you, you can actually, um, your body can thrive. Yeah. But if you're taught the poor form to start with, mm-hmm. you're going to end up with an immense amount of uh, musculoskeletal issues. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. people get that, I guess, because they're not doing anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or they yeah. go to the gym and they try an F45 class where they yelled at and powered upon. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. They lose weight yeah. for three months and the next thing you know they can't walk. Well, that's another thing that, you know, like, you know, I've got the issue with the ageism in, in, in modelling that I'm only really sort of, you know, on about it because I found myself in that situation, but um, that you're not celebrated. And so I think it's the same thing in the sort of health and well-being, and, um, you know, in the way that you treat yourself in, in that world is that you have to be, you have to be realistic about the situation. You have to be kind to yourself and you have to um, have your downtime because it's you know, yoga is all about balance. Life's all about balance. You know that from being, you know, Qigong practitioner, that it's, it's the middle way, it's the balance. And you throw something out of balance and you've got to sort of work your way back to, to finding that. How yeah. old were you when you first found yoga then? And, and what got you to, I guess, fall in love with the mat? <laughs> I don't really like working on the mat. I like, like, you know, no mat. But So you like just grounding? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I yeah. Went with Qigong, I, I love all surfaces that, that, that aren't synthetic, that aren't mats, you know. Oh, I think mats, mats box you in. Like, I don't really think, like being told what to do. <laughs> Total limitations, <laughs> so, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having these like borders and especially, you know, bigger people. I mean, I'm not huge, but some of my clients are certainly bigger than me, big guys and the mat's too small. They make them so, make themselves small. But um, how did I find yoga? So I um, I watched yoga on TV. There was um, a woman that used to live near our family, and she was called Swami Saravasti, and she was on television. Very forward for you know nineteen seventies television. Well, um, what wasn't going on in nineteen seventies really <laughs> in Australia? <laughs> she was an Indian lady, and she obviously you know was a long time yoga practitioner. And her husband worked in television, and so obviously he was sort of able to sell the show. So I just used to copy Swami and make up my own stuff in the living room. Well, that's as the a, way to do it, right? Isn't it? I mean, yeah. I believe the philosophy is I'll let you go on with it, but yeah, just yeah. copy, feel, refine. Copy, feel, refine. And do it all Absolutely. super slow. Absolutely, yeah. At every level, yeah. even refinement, super slow. Yep. When yep. you want to do a quick class, do it slow, <laughs> but make it a short class. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm with you. Yeah. So Swami, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so you... Swami. So Swami got me up to about, uh, I don't know, maybe 12 or something like that. And then high school started and we had it in physical education in PE. Um, you can choose it. So I chose yoga and um, I did that for about three years at school. And then that got me about, up to about 16. And then I don't know how it came along, but Mr. Iyengar's uh, Light on Yoga just Great book. ended up in front of me. And that around that time I started modelling. And so um, I just... Was that your guide to better living? I <laughs> know oh, I hung on to it for sheer vanity. Like <laughs> it, it did all the right things for my body and it made me feel really fit and kept me slim and, you know, hit 18 and, and started traveling. And so this little light on yoga was my, my anchor. 
and I'd practice yoga morning and night, morning and night, morning and night, all out of the book, like, you know, like just teaching myself. No you know. YouTube classes? <laughs> <laughs> Pre-everything. This is when the dinosaurs walked the earth. <laughs> Um, but no, it's so, it's so true because I'd turn up on, on sheets and they go, oh, how do you, you know, how do you stay so fit? And I go, oh, I do yoga. And they go, oh, what's that? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. So what, what sort of countries were you modeling in at that point of, you know, as a young Aussie woman you yeah. know, abroad? So, um, I caught the plane, caught a plane for the first time when I was 18 and I went to New York and I arrived, wow. um, in the middle of winter. <laughs> And I'd never even been to the snow in Australia, so yeah. <laughs> it was like a massive shock. No thermals? <laughs> yeah, no what? Thermals? No, thermals. no, no nothing, no, no coat, no nothing. I went and got this great big, you know, at an army disposal store. And it was this huge coat, you know, like it'd just be a walking coat. Yeah, yeah, funny times. And then from there I went on to Paris and from Paris just sort of worked all over Europe and just got a bit sort of disillusioned with it all, actually, living in Paris. Um, I saw the side of modelling that made the stars fall out of my eyes a little bit. Was it bit. creepy or was that? Yeah, it was creepy. Yeah, right. It was creepy. Um, you were told, the agency told you, you know, who to have dinner with and what photographers to socialise and, and have dinner with and... Um, yeah. It, um, Heartbreaking, I guess, as a, as a young professional coming through um, at that point. I'm surprised I didn't realise before, but I didn't realise before. I was very sort of, you know, I grew up in the bush and I wasn't really exposed to maybe city life or maybe sort of adult society or something like that. But I just didn't really realise that that's sort of how Arcadic things go. Arcadic mindset yeah. too, isn't it, really, when you yeah. think about it? Like, because yeah. they're, I lived in Austria and there's some, I know there's some weird stuff going on there. You know, mm. like, you know what mm. I mean? Like, mm. if they think about people talking about, oh, you know, the Greek mentality and it's like, and what ah. Greeks did to, and it's like, mm. so what, what, what decade are we living in? Yeah. And aren't we all humans? Like, yeah. I don't give a and shit so... about the Greeks, what they did. I love <laughs> Greek people. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that so blew your it, mind, huh? It, it was a little, um... I just, you know, I, I felt a lot like prey um, and at castings and, you know, like runway show castings, you, you just, you know, you were there in your G-string and you just walked across the room and that was all of us doing that and stuff like that. Like it was just like I knew it wasn't right and, you know, you, yeah, you and so, many sorts, right? so many situations. This is so not right. It's not. You know, it's, it's, it's just not right. And so from then on, um, I don't know, that got me up to about mm, 22, 23, something like that. Um, I came back to Australia and, and I just thought I was living in Bondi and my life was, you know, just lovely and I worked really well in Australia. So I sort of started thinking like, why am I going overseas all the time? And I, I don't really like that world. It's not my tribe. It's like, you know, and I was doing yoga and I was, you know, hanging out on the beach and being really healthy. Living and the dream, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Isn't and, Australia and it was just a trip like, when you come home to it and everyone's like, g'day, how are you? And they're so friendly and warm and it's yeah. like. Yeah. But warm. people in the industry would go, what are you doing back? You know, like, why aren't you staying in New York? Why aren't you staying in Paris? It's like. Oh, it's not, I'm not really having a very nice time. Like, I, you know, yeah, there was, okay, it was the nightclubs and, you you know, sometimes you sort of got some sort of very exciting jobs and things like that and you, and you did get to travel. That was just one of the main things that I loved. Um, so I sort of started to base myself more in Australia and that was that whole tug of war thing all throughout my sort of, you know, mid to late 20s, I'd go back and I'd, you know, base myself out of Germany again because I'd think, oh, you know, got to make some money, got to make some money out of this, you know, because, you know, that's what sort of drilled into your chance. head. Got my chance. Got, got my, my chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. only lasted 30. <laughs> At that time you did. That so was, it was all over. That was around probably the same ilk, right, same Yeah, she's, she's a little bit older than me. <laughs> How old is she then? Um, I think if I'm 52, I think she's probably about, oh, uh, 58, 59, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you yeah. know, at your age, you I must, think. at that point, Sorry, you must have been thinking, God, she's <laughs> like, you know, she would have been near the, in a twilight of her 30 career. She would have been 27 or something. Um, I think by then she'd sort of hooked up with different people and she was pretty much um, 
carving a groove in, you know, creating the brand that she is. Yeah, yeah. So she'd been able to sort of cross over into and she had very good management. She had um, Stuart Cameron and it was really Stuart. I don't think I'm talking out of school. It was really Stuart and Elle that created Elle and she was one of the first sort of brand models. Um, it was a very smart idea in a way if that was the way that you wanted to go. Yeah. Wow. So mm. there mm. you are seeing yeah. that happening and you're in Bondi. And what yep. are you thinking with yourself? And I'm back and forth to Munich and to Hamburg and just like Good morning. Schlep, schlepping around over there doing these catalogue jobs where you just wouldn't stop. You'd stay in a hotel, you'd go to the shoot, you'd go from the shoot to the train, you'd go catch the train to another city and then you'd stay in a hotel and then you'd go to the shoot. And it was just like endless, endless, endless weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of doing that. Um, <laughs> And I'd, you know, I'd call my mum and I'd think, I'd say, mum, you know, like I'm just really not enjoying myself. Like, yeah, I'm walking through these, you know, villages and I am going to some different places and stuff, but I sort of, you know, like I, I just really like living in Australia. I love my lifestyle here. I always have. Um, and A couple it's of like, frozen tears in your eyes there, it's, Kate. It's just winter. like, well, <laughs> shoot me then. <laughs> I just want a nice life. Like I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Like I don't sort of, you know, I don't necessarily you know and I know that people have you know thought thought it odd but I I have never necessarily wanted to be anybody I've just been sort of happy in my little life being Kate Bell like um and not wanting a huge amount more so the career trajectory that perhaps some people some models and was also put on me um I just um wasn't you it wasn't me no it wasn't me no, I, 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 I guess to doing yoga changes your awareness of yourself. It changes your perception of yourself and, and the world around you. I so. totally can correlate with that. Recently, I just became a certified Qigong teacher. I got uh-huh. teacher's training. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I said practitioner before. No, well, you I'll always got to be back. a practitioner, don't you? <laughs> you do. You and do. And yep. the more I've got into my practice again this is so I've been doing it for eight years and this is now the time that it becomes more ingrained as my life and my life as a major fundamental energy source killer for yeah. Yeah. yeah and I get what you're saying there because when you start to understand what the dantian is and that's a muscle and that that muscle itself which you know is located an inch and a half below the navel and an inch and a half in from your external skin Hmm. that that muscle once that's worked like any other muscle like the brain like the bicep the tricep any other muscles that our human anatomy has that carries the skeletal system because we are muscular skeletal being Mm -hmm. um your life force and your external energy and your internal energy become supreme and all the stuff that people pine for the career and the money and the this Mm. and that is somewhat illusionary, empty. Illusionary, empty. Yeah. You need it, right? You need some sort of source of finance yeah. and based nutrition and, and housing. But yeah. I could live in the studio if I had to. Mm. I'd probably practice a lot and surf and mm. do a lot of podcasts and make some money. Yeah. But, yeah, it's kind of quite the conundrum that you found yourself in, anyone who gets really involved. And I, I wouldn't call it. A spiritual practice, I call it almost a, a, a your human birthright. Yep. If that's the yep. way I'm looking at it, because yep. it's a conduit to being human, like and what human really could be, can be. Well, we're not taught um, it, are we? No, and not it's in magic. modeling, not no, in school. No. The energetic human anatomy that you and I are, mm. like 100. percent There's no way that we are not an electrical force field. Mm that our soul travels in that actually has you and I encapsulated in and yep. we have to be careful and good to our soul with our human anatomy, mm. otherwise we don't go to sleep at night mm. and all these other bad things, karma, and that happens mm. to us. Mm. We're going to love it and we should be taught to embrace it. Yep. Yep. So you were obviously going through that as yeah, a model. So, so all of my, yeah, all of my 20s were this sort of tug of war thing and then I hit, I hit around 30 and um, so I'd, I'd, you know, like I'd, I'd work and I'd, you know, 
work and I'd mod, you know, work modeling different, different places. And then all of a sudden I think, oh, I just really want to go to Barcelona or I just really want to go to India. And I'd, so I'd take off and I'd be gone for a couple of months. And, <laughs> and so the agencies. boyfriend, he'd be chasing you, would he, at the time? They'd, just, you know, they'd come and they'd go. Like, <laughs> but agencies really didn't like that because, you know, you have a certain, especially in your 20s, you have your product and you have a certain um, shelf life. And if you're not playing the game, then they're not going to play with you. Kate, we need you to do 12 campaigns this year. you got to do three <laughs> catalogues. Oh, and then she's in a... India. Where is she? It's like. <laughs> Bloody ding dong. Yeah. Gone again. That bell's gone. Okay. Who's next? Yeah. Another blondie thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and then when I was around 30, I guess, um, you know, I was told by different agencies, you know, I was in London for a while and I was told, you know, like here, you know, the agencies, you know, the, the main, the main market's 18 to 25 and, you know, like you're not going to really last much longer. I, can, I guess I look, you know, I was still doing that sort of, you know, I suppose I could pass for 25, I don't know, but, but, um, they couldn't sell me like that for much longer. And so, um, that sort of, um, around that time was a very difficult time because modeling did slow down a lot. Um, but by then my, you know, I'd got my teacher training in yoga um, that just sort of happened. I didn't see it coming. I was um, I was about 25 and I was going to um, the Sydney Yoga Centre and beautiful um, teacher Eve Grisbowski just came up one time and just said, we're doing a teacher training. Do you want to do, do it? And I sort of thought, like, me? Like... <laughs> And um, oh, so the girl I did. In the corner. I did. I, okay. Yeah, yeah. All and right. it took me two years rather than the one because I just, you know, traveling, um, working. Yeah, just you know, missing lots of stuff. And um, but they didn't seem to mind. And I did. A, um, I really loved the second year because I did a lot of um, assisting with Eve, and we were doing uh, people like um, people that had had strokes and people that had have like physical disabilities and stuff. So I, I got a, a huge amount of. Um, knowledge of therapy yoga um that I was very lucky to get incredible um yeah yeah so yeah by that sort of early 30s and stuff then and I could, you were starting I could, to get it as a human too right yeah it was sinking yeah. in yeah I could fall back on the yoga and that's when I yeah started I mean I was teaching straight away from about 27 I was teaching straight away little classes in the YWCA and I, mean, I know the People were so nice and I think I must have been so useless and it's like <laughs> they didn't care. Like, <laughs> but um, I think I was there with my heart, you know. I think I was, I was, I was a kind teacher. I've always been a kind but teacher. you're doing it for like, like 13 years really as a practitioner. Yeah, so that, so yeah, you're quite knowledgeable yeah, in the form, yeah, I guess. Knowledgeable in the form, perhaps not verbalising it like super, super well. Ah, but, the voice wasn't you know. <laughs> The voice has taken a while, Matt. <laughs> so you got yeah. quite a voice. So I was I'm saying, but I wasn't it. heard. Yeah. Isn't that a fun? That's a weird mm. time in your life, mm. isn't it? Yeah. When your throat, yeah. you know, if you think about your chakras, your throat chakras, mm. kind of not even there, and you mm. can't look someone in the eye or whatever. Yeah. It happens to virtually all of us. Yeah. So you were going through that and trying yeah. to teach and find a new groove. So that must be. Yeah, weird. yeah. So that was sort of you know like my. You know, and, I, and I kept, you know, I'd go back to New York and I had it and kept an apartment in New York and I'd go back and forth and da, da, da. And, you know, like it kept on going, modelling kept on going, which is so fantastic because it meant that I didn't have to like teach a thousand yoga classes a day um, to survive. I could sort of keep it at, you know, at just a nice level. <laughs> Pick up the odd 10 grand job. Yeah, just, and, uh, just, okay. just sort of keep on cruising, keep on cruising. Um, yeah, and then. Went back to London. Interestingly, I went back to London in my late thirties because I had a girlfriend that was with um, the world's first um, mature model agency, and I thought, oh, that's actually really interesting. Um, Here's my ID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I am late thirties. You know, um, and I was starting to look late thirties too because you know, you, even with all the yoga that you do, you, age does its thing. So yeah, I went back there, and that was just the greatest thing to do. And um, uh, it's not having tickets on myself, but I've always been a futurist. I can always sort of sort of see what's going to be happening down the track. And I remember I was over there, and I was starting to work like I'd worked in my early twenties and stuff. It was like full time modelling, and I was chugging around London, and I was doing this, and I was doing that, and it was just like 
oh, wow, like the industry's really changed. They told me back then that, you know, it was all over at 30, but hey, I'm pushing 40 and it's starting to pick up. So when I'd come back to Australia um, in my early 40s, the, the me's that were around had, you know, started to have kids and families and so they weren't around all that and much. And they weren't working. And I sort of started to, like, get on a bit of a roll. And, <laughs> and by then I'd met my beautiful partner, so he put me on track and sort of pinned my feet to the ground and so we sort of started to set up our little life together and, and um, yeah, get very strong in, in our groove, in our really healthy healthy mind, healthy body, um, you know, service to community, like, you know, just be a good human, like get your good human. Foundations, yeah. right? Yeah, what, what? The big foundations. They're Absolutely. Huge. I know my neighbours or, you know, like I'd start to all that thing. God, I never thought about neighbours before. Like <laughs> neighbours are I... really important, yeah. And how to be a good neighbour is really important. It's an important thing um, that people don't think about. Um but all stuff like that. And so, you know, as 40, 40s sort of rolled along, um, the yoga was powering the, you know, and by then I was just doing privates and stuff, was running around doing classes all over the place. People telling me what to do wasn't my thing. So um, I just started to get private clients that I could move around when I got a modelling job. So like I'd take them on and I'd say I'd, I still work as a model and that comes first because that's what it's all about, being available. And so they'd if be you're, grateful when you came back to, wouldn't they? They'd be more excited then because you're back. Oh my God, Kate. Mostly. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> or is it like the hairdresser where they've moved yeah, on? Yeah, mostly. It's just like, <sighs> okay. You know, late 40s, I started to find a little niche in the market. Oh, we need someone that's all healthy and whatever. Oh, Kate Bell. So Kate Bell was just sort of, you know, cleaning up in the health and wellness thing that sort of started to boom. And I think. The fact that I've followed my heart and I've followed my gut, I've kept integrity about what I want to do. Well, they're um, two of the three brains when you think about it, aren't they? The gut yeah. and the heart. Yeah. Because then you've got, yeah. you know, your intelligence, yeah. your brain. So they're big things to lead from. And it served me well. So anyone listening, I think it serves you well to stick with stick, stick with what you what you know is right. And, um, you know, don't be, so, don't be too swayed by what other people think that you should do. Even if you show aptitude in something or, you know, it's not, it may not be your journey. If you don't want to do it, it doesn't feel right. You don't have to do it. Walk away from the tribe, hey? Yep. Yep. Walk away from the tribe. Yeah. Like find your own tribe. Find your own tribe. Find your own tribe. I love that. With a bit of mess and it doesn't serve you, walk away from it and start finding who you want to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't be scared. No, don't be scared. No. You know yeah. that saying, if you're standing on the edge, you're taking up too much space. Oh, really? That's a, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah a, um, a physiotherapist told it to me once in Byron Bay. I went and mm-hmm. jumped off a cliff that day on a Bucks party and dislocated my coccyx. <laughs> it's to be thought about, not acted on if you've been a physio and right. your body, at that stage, my body was weak. Right. But, you know, Kate, as you, um, as you age, as a man, um, and obviously for you as a woman, uh, we go through different things. Mm. Um, our bodies change intrinsically. The, the, the word menopause, um, mm. for me, uh, I don't know enough about it and I probably should know more about it. Yeah, my because wife there's menopause. There's menopause. You'd be perimenopause wow. right now. Mm-hmm. That's what the Qigong's <laughs> about, huh? So, yeah. you know, the... the Bought any the boats ma- lately? Like... <laughs> The, the, the menopause yeah. and yeah. the menopause, um, how important is your anatomy going to handle that transition if you are fit and healthy and if you do have a daily ritual or that's not just super yang, not just like mm. super intense and I'm going to ride my bike or I'm going to do this, but it's nurturing. H- how will that set you up in those years to come? I thought of it, I'd be on, all on top of it. And I, you know, I had my books ready and I had my, you know, I'm, I'm you know, going to do it naturally and, and all this sort of stuff. And I know it's quite, I was quite early maybe because I haven't had kids and apparently you, you, um, I, and, I, and it seems fairly normal. Your body thinks, okay, well, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. We're not going to have kids. So let's just go through menopause. Like and maybe that's, that's what happens. I don't know. But 
I started to sort of go through menopause at about 20, uh, 46 and I didn't really realise it was happening. I started to lose a bit of weight, quite a lot of weight, and I think, okay, you know, that's something. Feeling good. Yeah, like, <laughs> and then I was doing this, like, thing for, like, live TV and I saw myself on a monitor and I just sort of thought, oh, like, you know, I might look quite slim, but actually I look really gaunt and I look really old and my hair looks a bit weird and, yeah, that's when it was just like, wow, okay, something's, something's going on here. And, again, sheer vanity like, <laughs> got me going, okay, I've got to, you know, and that's, you know, yeah, the hot flushes started and all that sort of stuff. But I really focused on um, just doing it naturally, doing it the way that, um, With you food? Know, yeah, with, with with herbs, with okay. herbs, yeah, old school herbs, um, you know, the burdock and the choke root and the whole, you know, like you can still find um, old school herbalists. Well, food is the medicine, right? It was all plant-based and so I stuck on those herbs for through day herbs and night herbs and for about four years just, you know, persistently um, and came out the other side and... Um, I don't know. I've never felt better. Like I just think I supported my body when I when I really understood what was happening. The fact that all of my system was changing, like it does, at, you know, like at, at puberty, um, and accepted that and realized that what those changes actually are is your body is your it ends up being your heart. Your heart is like really needs the support because all the other organs are being changed in these tiny, teeny, tiny little alchemic ways. And what happens is your heart really gets um, quite stressed, quite stressed yeah. out. And when you think about it like that, you think, well, why wouldn't I want to sort of support my body and support my heart and support myself through this? Like, yeah. That's probably... Logically, in a way, why some yeah. people have a lot of heart attacks at that age as yeah. well. Is yeah. that right? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because ultimately, your heart's the thing. Like you have, you know, no heart, you're dead. Like well, you can your survive without your spleen, everything. your pancreas, and like you know a few other things. But it's everything, isn't it? Yeah, your heart's everything. Yeah. You know yeah. the 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 greatest gift I think is us learning about our anatomy because for me as a far as a father, you know, when I realise holding my I think about eight months old at the time, you know, a year mm. ago, I was like, I'm going to die mm. <laughs> and life is short and temporary. Mm. And That's I've a gotta... Buddhist meditation to say to yourself, one day I'll die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I, I literally knew that was really imminent now and that I had a mass responsibility. And then I started thinking, well, you know, I've got to live a lot and I've got to nurture myself a lot and I've got to find the foundations again to it's not money based, mm. but that consciousness, you know, instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to die at 60 or 70 or my granddad lasted to 94 mm. and mm. trying to put a number on it, mm. as you're sort of saying with the modeling, there is no yeah. number. No. Um, it's how you feel. Mm. For me, I was like, you know what, this is time to absolutely punch into these next decades and thrive. Mm hmm. Because I want to hang around for this little kid. And he yeah. might die before me. Like yeah. the thing is no one knows. You go to bed at night, you set the alarm. I'm going to yeah. wake up and do this, that, and the yeah. other. I wake up at 3 a.m. every day. 3.33 is my alarm clock. Yeah. <laughs> and I may not wake up tomorrow. Yeah. But i got to play today. Mm. Mm. Exactly. Yep. And I think that each of the decades are really, um, you know, are really have their own have their own energy, I suppose, and have their own things to teach us. I was just talking to a client today that was in her late seventies, and she's been she's been feeling in her seventies, you know, like she's sort of making away a little bit. She feels stuck in different places, in mentally and physically and whatever. But she was told by a friend that her eighties are just a time when you just really thrive again, sort of like your fifties. Yeah, which is really beautiful. Like at eighty, you just skyrocket again. So if you can make it to eighty. I think that's really fun to look forward to. I, yeah. I think it's a real, um, I'm going to try and make it 80 now you said that. No. Yeah, I'm looking forward to 80 too. You just have to change your perception on things. And I could see how 80 would be really interesting because all the things of youth have sort of slipped away. So you go, right, well, what am I left with? And, you know, and, and all, the, all the things that might hold you back in little ways of what will people think or you know, anything like that, any, anything surface, 
It's just like, no, just like, just go Imagine for going it. Imagine going bald. Be uh, that being, crazy old person. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can get away with trip. it. Like, because <laughs> you're not, you think, yeah. you're not thinking. Yeah. I remember looking at a, a wedding video, a friend of mine's like three years ago, it was 11 years since I got married. And he goes, mm-hmm. you look pretty similar. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what, I probably do look like Bruce Willis still. <laughs> you know, it's it's a funny thing, you know. I met Bruce Willis once in a nightclub in New York. <laughs> How was that? Did he hit on you or something or what happened? He just found it very interesting. He was just like, you know, sorry, Bruce. <laughs> he would have been a cool guy, I bet. Um, uh, I, I didn't find him all that cool. He was too caught up with being Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's never happened to me. <laughs> but the, the the bald side of thing for me, I remember like literally seeing dudes in their 60s and 70s with like good heads of hair mm-hmm. on the bus one day and I would have been 26 or something and I was like, God, these guys suck, <laughs> you know. But then when I embraced it and did the shave down, yeah, yeah, right. it was kind of what must be obviously not 80, but the vibe is like, you know, yeah, I don't really have to worry. I can get up. I can put a bit of moisturizer yeah. on or yeah. olive oil or The latest thing, Matt, oil. is tattooing. You get a tattooed hairline. It's the biggest thing for men at the moment. I'm not getting one, <laughs> I promise you. Like the eyebrow one, the, the whole head. <laughs> you do the whole head, just oh, little awesome. tiny, like, you know. Dots. Yeah, yeah. Is it indigenous at all? Has it got like a cool look to it or is it? <laughs> it looks pretty good. Like, you know, it's another look. Like you'd have you, it for life. You'd have to you like it. Are you challenging me? Is this a <laughs> head tattoo challenge? The next time I see you, man, it's like <laughs> a whole new person. <laughs> so, you know, getting into that, um, the mindset of reaching that age, Do you, when you're practicing your yoga, are mm. you focused on certain organ groups or just your overall anatomy? Um, I'm pro- focusing on just being very, 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 very present um, and in my body and I'd l- really like to think of where the nadis, the like meridians are running through me and if I don't hold on and if I can position myself in a certain way, then I am completely effortless and I think that's where the magic of yoga is. It's just your circuits are just, you know, the, there's there's all the electrical circuits are just open and it's a, it's a full bodied thing. But I'd like to get into uh, knowing uh, more about the, the organ thing. I do Japanese yoga. I do um, Ryoho, which is like a, I think it's an anglicized form of Japanese yoga, like key yoga. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and is that, that inverted focus, or? No, that focuses more on the organs. Yeah. Little sort of repetitive movements, a little bit like qigong. Wow, yeah. sounds yeah. pretty. Yeah. It sounds like I've got to come and do a class one day yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if I could yeah. maybe get a, a, a timetable off here at some yeah. stage. I'll come yeah, to yeah, a class, yeah. I promise yeah. you. It'd yeah. be great. Yeah, so I mix all of those sorts of things up. But You mm. know, Kate, this is the one time of the show that I like to sort of suggest a shout out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to look straight down this camera and have a shout out. Um, to a guy called Atil Singh from Happy Buddha Retreats. Atil uh, is a great friend of our family. He's mm-hmm. my wife's ex, actually. So that's right. Right. that's a cool thing that mm. we're mates. But mm. Atil actually said to me, hey, um, why don't you come up and just teach a bit of Qigong at one of the retreats? Mm-hmm. And I was like, finally, after eight years, I'm going to become a teacher. If it wasn't for Atil giving me that push I probably would have waited till I was 50, but mm-hmm. I, I want to be able to help my generation, older and younger, understand our human potential. Right. So um, that's my shout out. Who's your shout out to? I might do a really big shout out to Christabel Llewellyn, who started as my piano teacher. I started learning piano about four years ago now and met Christabel. I just knew her as Christabel Llewellyn and she's actually Dr. Christabel Llewellyn and she's a neuroscientist and a medical researcher and completely holistic in her understanding of the world. And through her, given all of these little bits and pieces that I've been picking up for the last sort of 35 years, um, anything that was magical and wonderful and good for my health and good for the planet and da-da-da-da, like all of this stuff I'd sort of absorb and try and sort of live and take that on, and, you know, friends, not so many, so many friends, but family and people would sort of like, 
you know, I felt very, very different for a long time. Um, and I didn't have enough sort of education in those fields to pull it all together and to, um, to be able to verbalise what I just sort of felt was the right way and the, you know, absorbing information. Like I couldn't tell you why to eat broccoli, but I know that I've read it somewhere and it's like, yep, broccoli, that's it for life. I'm eating broccoli often, like, you know, things like that. And so she has really... Um, being able to converse with her and she, well, not so much converse, but she talking to me where, and because she's holistic, she's able to summarize it all, summarize it all, but then give it the whole, um, you know, the whole f physics of it, the whole, um, you know, the cutting edge science of the brain and the neural pathways to the body, which is what you're doing in yoga and um, this whole massive world of science, of actual science, um, that doesn't stop at um, just because we haven't created a an instrument to um, measure it, to measure energy or the electrical field of the body, doesn't mean it's Seven not layers, right? there. Or yeah. Or... So having someone like that, that's just like, oh no, that's the ele body's electrical field and she's mapped it and she, you know, like it's really given. Um, Dr. Christabel Llewellyn. Dr. Christabel Llewellyn. Yep. She wow. is like. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you want to look someone up, I'm sure she's online. Ooh, she's... It's one of my go-tos, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, she's um, pretty under the radar. but um, And she's a pianist, right? She's a concert pianist. Her first PhD was in music. Yeah. Yeah. Her second PhD was in medicine. Wow. So she must mm. be, because my wife is a former concert mm. pianist and mm. was at the con. I've seen Katie play in, and we've talked about drugs. You know, I, I've had a handful of drugs, not a lot of mm. drugs, don't do drugs, whatever, mm. you mm. know. I think medical cannabis is pretty incredible yep. if you need it. Yep. Uh, if you don't need it, the natural energy of your body will heal you yep. regardless. Yep, yep. Um, You're either, either on a healing journey or a disintegrating journey. Yeah. Yeah, but yep. I'm 100%. But mm. that uh, when, the, when they play piano mm. and Christabel and Katie and uh, Ludovico Analdi and these other great pianists play mm. and obviously the, the greats, you know, yep. from Europe, they are flying and they are like ballerinas or yogis or whatever, that is but some next level. The piano even more so because it's your five fingers and the strings and the vibration and the tonal sound onto your fingers, they're your five meridians, they're your five nadis. And what that does to the human body, you're tuning yourself. You, super you're healing, right? Super healing, super tuning. It's just phenomenal. So that's sort of what Christabel is on about. She's written a book and... Yeah, we will hear, hear more about Christabel. I'm grateful people like that are getting a voice. Not yet. She hasn't, but she will. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it's interesting because, um, you know. Can I do another shout out? You can do one. <laughs> certainly. <laughs> Only because um, lately these, these, um, these wise women have been crossing my paths. You know, these women in their 60s that are just like, yeah, they're just, they're just sort of so strong. And I don't want advertising to tear mature women down. I don't want them to feel less confident because they're being advertised to by really young women and saying, only this is beautiful, only this is relevant, only this is worthwhile. These wonderful women are, are, your, are your market. And they're not being acknowledged and they're actually being disrespected. And that sort, of, that sort of encapsulates what I was saying before. And then this shout out to these women because women, you know, in, from their 50s into their 60s, you know, these women are in their 60s and they're, they're phenomenal. And for them to feel any less so because they don't see themselves reflected in any advertising or any media is just really poor. It's really poor. Yeah. Damn straight. You yep. know, yep. I was thinking as a, um, I was saying to Katie the other week, my wife, you know, the, the concept of a great documentary called Life After Kids. Mm -hmm. Like you got these incredible people that yeah. suddenly they've put these decades into these kids and the kids yeah. might have passed, might have succeeded, yeah. might be addicts, might be 
going through their own struggles or they might have harmony with them, which you hope that that's the end goal, right? You mm. know, mm. as you said, you know, the disintegration or... Healing or disintegration. Yeah, disintegration. healing, just like living through this, you know, loving and healing journey, you know. Um, but it comes back to because there's all these incredible people on the planet that get to a point where they start to question who they are. Mm. Mm. Well, they've been doing something so long that they start to be really, really solid in that and really, really like potent. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Christabel mm. Donati is about, right? Christabel Llewellyn. Oh, Llewellyn, yeah. sorry. That's yeah. what she's about, I'm sure. She's yeah. potent. She's yeah. got it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's she doing mm. at the moment? What's she doing? Yeah, has um, she got like a book going on? Or? Yeah, she's got a book going on, but I probably shouldn't say all that much about her at the moment because um, she's got her own thing going on and um, it's not for me to tell her story. <laughs> oh, I love that respect factor. Respect's yeah. the, the yeah. greatest key. I am, um, you know, you can only admire people who can uh, hold that tongue because loose lips sink ships, as yeah. as we all know. Yep. But the truth sets you free. So I'm sure yeah, what yeah. Um, Christabel is going to put out will be yeah. very factual and yeah, it will yeah, be scientific yeah. based and supported. Yes. And coming from that theoretical side of, I mean, Katie, my wife, I hate to talk about my wife regularly mm, on this mm. show, but she is so disciplined because of mm-hmm, piano. Mm-hmm. To yep. be 43 nearly and been playing since she's five and at the level she does, yep. you've got to have your life together. Yep, yep, yep. You can't do it any other way. Yep. It's like, yep. you know, to, for you to be modeling at 52 and to be a yoga teacher who's been practicing for now 37, 38, 38 years, um, you, you got to have your, your, your ducks in a row, right? Yep. Own your shit and do your bit. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And, you know, Kate, mm-hmm. the, the foundation of everything, would you say, is that, that funny red heart? Thing, the love, the feel, how important is love and how important is, is it to love yourself? And as you said, you've got a beautiful life partner. How, how important is that the ability to then go on and love someone else? How, how important is it for our life journey? I think there are a lot of people that go through life and don't find, a, you know, a life partner and stuff. And I think that's, um, you know, that's, a, that's as worthy a journey as, as having a life partner. Um, I never want people to feel that just because they haven't found a partner that they they could um, trust and feel safe with or whatever. Um, yeah, it doesn't mean that they're not learning about love and not learning about love of themselves and not loving um, their uh, friends. Others, yeah. and exactly, exactly, yeah. But um, no, I think you know, community. You know, community is the is the sort of the of the the next circle out from love and you can have um, very fine relationships with with all sorts of people and you can have fleeting, you know, fleeting love affairs with people and not consummated or anything like that but just, you know, fleeting love moments with all sorts of people um, and I think that's, that's an just, incredible um, memory and journey and exciting too, right? Yeah. If you may, can contain it, if you can handle it. Yeah. Some people, they feel... S- their self-worth disintegrates when they do that? Uh, I'm not really, I suppose I'm not really saying in a sexual way. I mean it more like um, to keep being available um, and open-hearted enough for it might just be, you know, a chance on the street that you're talking to somebody or whatever, but just to keep your heart open so that your life becomes this just one journey of, of being open to life. And I think that is perhaps what, what love does. And and the you know the male female or, or the or the you know female female whatever but just a life partner um, sort of love journey um, I think that's the reason that we we search for that so much so that we can feel that it's okay to be ourselves um, and then express ourselves through all of our being but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily need to be if you. Can you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, sure. But you're, you know, obviously you're saying there in many ways, it's not the be all and end all no. to be able to, you know, to be go home. Love, and, to yeah. be in love. Yeah. 
Yeah. But but to love yourself and to love community and love connecting yeah. Yeah. is yeah. important. That might be connection. I think that's perhaps perhaps a better way of saying it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We're we're humans. You know, we have to connect. Connecting is everything. Like, you know, like um, you know, people can say oh, social media is really crap and da da da. And there's and there's lots of you know, there's lots of things about social media that, for, especially for young people, I think that are a little bit not not quite right, but. Um, I think for our age and stuff, I think, um, being social and being connected and, and, um, I think it's, it's, it can be quite joyous. Like it's, it's, it's your tribe and keep working on stuff that, that, that fills you with joy. And so that when you do walk down the street or you do go into Aldi or whatever, you're able to be really kind to that person and have that little moment with that person and, you know, look other people in the eye and, and really, um, Really live, really, yeah. Well, I saw really. Matthew McConaughey say something recently. Oh, I love it, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said something on the yeah. lines that was like, um, make sure your conscious body uh, really takes care of your soul because your soul is your soul for your lifetime. And when you go into an unconscious state, your soul is still with you. And then when you wake up, guess what? Those thoughts are still with you. So yeah. That um, decision you made when you were in Paris, let's say, that made you step away from, um, you know, something that just didn't feel in the right heart, mind, values of you, mm. uh, seems to have uh, taken care of your soul really well. Mm. And I think, you know, the understanding of uh, nurturing and loving yourself and your community and your tribe and connecting is... And really inspiring. I've been, um, I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to your personal journey and your understanding and your personal brand and, and how it's, you may not have become, you know, the next L, but you certainly stepped into that magical space mm. at the right time and, and life led that to you, which mm. now seems like it might be a, a greater opportunity for a lot of other women, uh, mm. especially if they've, you know, decided to make that self-nurturing side. Quick little uh, question before we, we wrap, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. um, in Paris today and in the high fashion stakes, are the girls still treated the same that they were back in the 1980s that you were feeling? I don't know how much um, men's attitude towards women is involved. Um, I do remember stepping out of Australia sort of for the first time and, and what a, um, a sexist world it is out there. I just never realised you grow up in Australia and you sort of don't see it and you don't think, yeah, I didn't even know it existed. I mean, now we're really aware that actually Australia is a really sexist country as well. <laughs> but um, for the rest of the planet, it's like there's still such a long way to go of like men and women being equal and um, respected, you know, the respect for men and respect for women and vice versa and, um, yeah. So if it's happening in Paris, I don't, I don't know. It probably has changed a little bit. Um, the Me Too um, didn't really hit the fashion industry all that much. There were a few big photographers that it was sort of taken down, but in general, not not too much. Um, yeah, and and until sort of there is this equality of the sexes um, and the deep respect for women. Um, then I think maybe it will continue happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, watch your space, yeah. you know, because it's, <laughs> that's a really fair note and to no, leave it on. Not, like. not at all. It, it, it seems to, it's a realist because you know you can. For me, the reason I wanted to throw that question to you is because you've done the work. You walked away from what was, I suppose, a, a pretty easy run with euros in your pocket, and you know, um, quite a probably a normal model life in Europe for those decades and you mm. might earn up, you know, say drinking too much wine or becoming marrying a, a prince. <laughs> marrying a prince. I mean, Princess Fiona, you know. Um, I think you've seen yeah. too much Shrek, but no, um, but no, that's a great film. But, you yeah. know, like, yeah. you know, anything is possible, right? Yeah. You, you know, but then the, the downside, the dark side there is you could have probably ended up with a coke habit, let's say, or. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. You know, and yep. mm, I know. 
that is a reality. The coke habit, the smoking habit, the alcoholism, yeah. a miscarriage, um, yeah. anything else that could have happened, but instead yeah. you went with your holistic way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. It wasn't such a conscious thing at the time. But it was a hard yeah. way, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, I tell you, yeah. that's a really important note to feel in life because right now the world's going through massive changes. Real estate prices are going through the roof. Your nephew's niece is my son and his peers to be, mm. I'm sure are going to have to make some heart way decisions and mm. some real decisions about how they want to live their life. Mm. Um, Kate, it has been an absolute pleasure Thank to connect you, with you. Thank you, Matt. It has been not talking to you too. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kate Bell. If you want to know a little bit more about Kate Bell, you can find out about her through connecting with her on social media. Yeah. I only do Instagram if I got one social media happening. <laughs> yeah. And I don't really know what you'll learn from that. It's just like modeling, modeling, modeling and a bit of yoga that, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd suggest maybe DM yeah. her a question if you want to about, you know, modeling or something like that. You never know. You might be run off your feet, Kate. Um, I have been writing a little bit more on my social media, which I'm really enjoying and sort of, yeah, just sort of having a bit of a voice as well about all of these sorts of issues because no one else is talking about it. So it's like, and they've been bugging me for a long time. So it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to say something. My advice to you, Kate, is maybe yeah. get a, get a podcast or something going because <laughs> you're, um, you're, you got a lot of, uh, understanding about life and it's an absolute pleasure to connect with you. Thank you, Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt Jai. This Ciao. Is this is Kate Bell. Ta-ta. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, night, whenever you listen to this, and just get down with yourself, get down with the community, your friends, your peers, and absolutely give this one life that you know that you have yeah. everything you got. A really big go. it will go before the blink comes back up from your eyes closing. Mm-hmm.